All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. We'd love you to support this show. Please like, follow, and subscribe to us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Your likes and subscription helps us to grow and attract interviews and content. So please retweet and share our posts. Your contributions are appreciated. All right, welcome to episode 478 of the KISS FAQ podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill. Got Ken, uh, 69th Blizzard on the board, causing trouble already. Troublemaker. Where's my band hammer? Um, and Marcus Almighty. Lonnie is digging a hole, so he might be here and he might not be. Um, this week, we're going to be talking about me. I. Mm me songs that have i or me in the title you know kiss is one of those bands which, which has often had kind of empowering songs about first person perspective i love it loud i just wanna i to refine it back to as simple as it gets and do you love me and you know there, there's a lot of like different songs. I, I like the anthemic stuff that's kind of King of the Mountain, you know, something goal oriented rather than it's all about me. So we've just called together a list. God knows if I missed any, but you know, a list of all the songs in the Kiss catalog which have I or me in their title. And we've just picked our 10 favorites out of those. And, you know, obviously it's going to, um, you know, when we rank them, be somewhat predictable in a way because you know even people who think outside the box for these rankings inevitably end up going with natural kind of most popular songs in some senses don't we we're all guilty of that but let's start with yeah. some some of the other stuff going on first in kiss world uh, obviously daniel's out and the show's over now but uh saw his second Dalhalla, or whatever it's called, uh, Kiss in a Quarry um, in Sweden, two, two nights in the pit. Um, you know, and last night was looked like pretty misty, kind of drizzly or worse weather, and tonight was uh, clear. I don't know if it was sunny in, in, in the hall, but it looked like uh, obviously a lot of happy Swedish fans having a good time with those shows. So hopefully everyone who did go to them had a great time. Uh, that's your final kiss in Sweden. They wrap up the tour this weekend with one date uh, in Norway, and then it's home for a, a bit of a break. But today it's July the 13th, and Lonnie's here. And I'm I'm just doing pre I'm just doing preamble, Lonnie. So your timing is perfect. Uh, what the hell is going on? Haven't even <laughs> finished my monologue. Yeah. Oh, d yeah. So <laughs> it's July the thirteenth, which means it's the fiftieth anniversary of the band's first showcase at the Hotel Diplomat in uh, New York City. Their first real gig, in a sense, because prior to that it had been Bleecker Street Loft, it had been the Daisy Club on Long Island, and the Coventry, obviously a pub. So, you know, it was, it was really the first real Kiss show with, you know, they had opening acts, at, you know, and been an opening act for, I think, Queen Country, or Queen County, uh, at one of the Bleecker Street Loft shows, but they had, I think there was the Planets and the Brats at this first one. I'm just going off the top of my head. So 50 years ago today, and they won't do another show until August the 10th, which is their their second showcase, and that's where they meet Bill O'Coin. So we're really into the 50th anniversaries now of momentous or moments of significance in history. Um, before we get into the ranking of our favorite songs about I or me, or containing I or me in the titles, um, one poll came up today that I thought was really interesting just to hit you guys with, and it's kind of an odd one to see on the FAQ, but come on, it's the FAQ, and should probably put odd in the title of the board, because someone asked, do you consider 
Kiss, one of the greatest rock bands of all time. Now that kind of ranks them up there against the Stones, the Kinks, the Beatles, um, <clears throat> Zeppelin, Sabbath, Alice Cooper. You know, the list goes on and on and on. My first response is, if you say no, what the hell are you doing on this podcast or on the message board? Um, but is it fair to rank Kiss up in those kind of top echelons of bands, some of which I mentioned, I didn't say yes. I'm sorry, Mark. Um, <laughs> rather than being a humongous cult band, in a sense, mm -hmm. in our minds, because we're so invested in it. Lonnie, are they as great as Black Sabbath? Or are they one of the greatest rock bands of all time, do you? You know, I think so. I say yes. I mean... I don't think I can say no. And just to give I mean, yesterday I was driving around the car and I listened just to a news station in St. Louis. And one of the commercials is um, concerts coming to St. Louis in the next few months. And they talk about um, Guns N' Roses at Bush Stadium, Aerosmith at Enterprise Center, Metallica at the Dome. And they don't mention Kiss at Enterprise Center. Ooh. And I said... I said that's disgrace. I was like, "Why? That's disgraceful. How how are they not listed amongst these bands? They're talking about Metallica, Guns N' Roses, you, you know, um, Aerosmith, all these big acts that are coming. And how how do you how do you not mention that? I, and I and I guess it's supposed program directors look at look they look at Kiss as like a cult band or something like that. Like oh well, Kiss that's just nonsense. You know, it's probably the same people that." thought that that was just nonsense back in the 70s type type yeah. of people you know and it's like you know I, and I, I was in the car with my wife and i go i think that's terrible why and they even mentioned they even mentioned stevie nicks and billy joel at soldier field i go that's four hours from here we don't live in kansas city <laughs> don't, soldier get me going Chicago, that. don't get me going about that <laughs> <laughs> but you know, they had their own radio stations in Kansas City. Let them advertise that over there. Um, but no, I think they absolutely do. I was, I was, a, as a Kiss fan, as a diehard Kiss fan, I was offended uh, by that. Like, that is a huge concert coming to St. Louis. Huge. The last time Kiss is ever going to come here. For real this time. The last time they're ever going to come here. Maybe. I think it's terrible that they just pass over it. Yeah. Nice. I wasn't expecting to put a quarter in Lonnie that early in the show. There, there we Sorry. Go. Mark, <laughs> are they the greatest? Or one of the greatest? You know, I'm going to say, and people are probably going to be surprised when I say this, but I'm going to say yes. I think they are one of the greatest. I mean, I definitely think that, you know, if you if you have these arguments, I'm sure people have on the board where saying, musically, they, they didn't have as much impact as the Beatles, or they weren't as impactful to a genre like Black Sabbath was, but I I venture to say that Kiss had a huge impact on the live performance art. Okay, Pre doing live concerts, pre presentation of show, just like Alice Cooper had a you know a big bit to do with that. Uh, I definitely think Kiss took it to the next level. You know, look at look at the look at the stages that they made. I mean, how many times have you heard musicians across the world and people in general saying that I was sitting on my carpet on my floor opening up a live two and looking at that centerfold and listening to that record so they definitely had an impact as far as stage performance did and probably they are probably going to be known as one of the greatest live performance acts of all time musically do they hold up to some of the other bands we mentioned maybe not but when you combine the music with the live show i think that they can hold their own against any of them and the merchandise what they did yes. to the business <laughs> The impact yes. they had from that perspective. Are they one of the greatest? Hell yeah, they are. Um, mm -hmm. They've inspired some. Look at all these rockers, you know, from our teen years, Mark. You know, the late 80s. Lonnie, you, you as well. You know, in particular, that were inspired by Kiss, uh, who mentioned them and dressing up in Kiss makeup and going on to forge their own paths and, in many cases, to become greater bands than Kiss. Um, are they one of the greatest? Hell yeah. What they did with merchandising, they took the Beatles to the next level. What mm -hmm. they did with four individual personas, what they did to damage the record industry and make it change. 
change, uh, you know, with four solo releases and Casablanca Records antics. You know, the fact that they're still doing it 50 years later, and I get people who say, uh, you know, in a conversation about music, a Kiss comes up and they're like, oh, they're still around? I remember them, you know, way, <laughs> way, way back. They're, they're, still, they're still doing it, you know? So, hell yeah. And it, it just seems very odd that anyone would not think they were when you're watching it i mean it's not about rose tinted glasses is i think it, it really is a realistic thing that they are one of the greatest ken yeah to me they're you know easily a top 10 you know yeah you put the beatles there and a number of other bands too but they're they're up there the, in, in my opinion but uh, your general audience may not but you know believe that so i also think they're the at number one most underrated or underappreciated band that's out there um because uh some people just don't take them seriously so they're you know they haven't really listened to the music uh that goes along with this you know the stage show again we've said, said it before these the the songs are uh, uh go hand in hand with the stage show and if the songs weren't up to snuff they would have lasted you know 50 years it's just it's just no way um now you know we always say you know like the, of course the, a lot of things are the beatles are number one i don't disagree but a lot of it has to do with you know hits and yeah sure kiss hasn't had all these uh, radio airplay and hits but that doesn't make them any less than a lot of these other bands and artists that are out there so yeah they're they're definitely uh, one of the greatest you know rock bands out there ever um you know and if you don't if they for people who don't uh agree with that that's you know that's their opinion um but a lot of those people that don't agree have never even listened to them or (laughs) to their back catalog so you got to really listen to the stuff before you make a, a honest judgment on them or dishonest judgment or <laughs> right i i agree with ken 100 percent about that um i think people have preconceived notions of kiss and have never listened to anything but maybe the handful of songs they've ever heard on the radio um yeah. i do i do an exercise um class with a buddy of mine on wednesdays and the instructor says Oh, if there's anything you want to hear during the class, let me know. And like, and sometimes I'll throw out a kiss song that I want to hear. Um, and, I, and a couple of weeks ago, I, I said I want to listen, play "Take Me." So the next week, she played "Take Me," and my buddy looks at me and he goes, "Who was that?" And I go, "He goes, did you request that? Who was that?" I go, "That was Kiss." He goes, "That was Kiss." Like, and he gives me a hard time about Kiss all the time. He's like one of these guys, like, "Oh, Bonnie, I don't, I love, every, I love you. You're one of my best friends, but I just don't get that whole thing with you, you know." <laughs> but like, we played "Take Me," and he's like, "That was really good." And so, like, I'm telling you, you know. So I give totally him, agree. Give I, him a chance. <laughs> don't. I mean, a lot of people do listen with their eyes. You know, yeah. they don't take the. Is, are you having a giggling? I am. It's legal in Missouri now. <laughs> reporting come you. visit me julian oh oh yeah <laughs> all right so take me as a nice segue into the rankings that we've done so i came up with a list and if i was wrong and you fact checked me i came up with 34 songs with i or me in the title uh, only from kiss studio albums and right now i'm gonna blow through all the songs that didn't get a single vote just so people know what was uh, in the mix today so um all of these got zero. Um, every time I look at you, I confess, I finally found my way. <laughs> Not surprisingly, I pledge allegiance to the state of rock and roll. Um, I walk alone. I will be there. I'll fight hell to hold you. I nearly voted for that, actually. Uh, I'm alive. I'm an animal. In my head, you're all that I want. Give me more. Give me more. Uh, nothing can keep me from you, not surprisingly. Um, take me down below. The devil is me. Uh, then she kissed me. You love me to hate you. And uh, you make me rock hard. Uh, two of the songs getting only a single vote. And I, I want whoever voted for these to own up. 
I was made for loving you got one someone's very last pick and uh, yes I know nobody's perfect also got one mark which one were you I was made for loving you okay which one were you okay and uh I which, was uh, which one of you is not, not perfect I was yes I know <laughs> Okay. Um, do you I love didn't me? Even vote for it. Hmm. I didn't even vote for it. No. Do you love me? Yeah. Um, also brings up the bottom with uh, just four points. So let's get into these rankings. Uh, what we have is um, sixteen songs got voted on, and I'll just uh, just do the the last few before we get into the top ten. Do you love me? On four points. I'm a legend. And talk to me. I'm a legend tonight, pardon me. And talk to me, tied on eight points. Take me. Didn't make the cut. Nine oh, points. What? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So after what Lonnie just perfectly illustrated, how could that it, not make it? It doesn't make our top ten <laughs> songs <laughs> about yourself. Yeah, so in tenth place on ten points, Lonnie, go first. I just wanna. Mm. I I had that ranked really high, and I probably that's I why probably it's the, that's why it's got nearly ten points. <laughs> I probably uh, wrecked I probably wow. wrecked the curve on that one. <laughs> yeah, I I've said many times on this show over the I don't know how many years we've been doing this show how much I like this song. It you know came out right after I bought Revenge, and I remember. It being on MTV, the video being on MTV in the summer of 92, that cool right, white, just all white background that they were playing in front of, <laughs> these guys dressed in black in the white background, they looked tough and cool. I was 13 years old, and you know what? I still think they look tough and cool in that video, and I still love the song. My niece requested that song being played at my wedding reception. I love it so much. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, my 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 coworkers, especially the older ones, said at, after my wedding reception. Well, you know, that's when it got a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> wow, a little too, a little too much. Let, huh? let loose and live a bit. How about yeah, that? Yeah. yeah, settle down, Nancy. So, uh, <laughs> I. Uh, I love. I just want to. I'll make no bones about it. I know I wrecked the curve that it's even on the list. Well, it's but, your sec it was your second favorite pick, which gave it number, nine it points, number two, which means hard. that someone else also voted for it and gave it a single point, and that would be me. Yes. It actually made my list, because it is summertime, and it is such a fun summertime song <clears throat> that if I'm going to pick a summertime song, it's going to be that over crazy, crazy nights. Mark or Ken, either of you got an opinion on I just want to, or do you think Lonnie and I are just batshit? You want to go first, Ken? Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it barely probably missed making my list um, of 10, of 10 songs. It just, uh, I thought, oh, it's a good song, but these other 10 that I like... I think are better songs, so uh, that I listed. So I, mm. that's what I went with. Did you yeah. know that Mark has zero Ezrin songs in his list? Mark, huh? Is that right? Well, honestly, I didn't. I didn't give that song even a, a remote <laughs> look at, to be quite honest. Uh, and not, and not because of, of of Ezrin. I mean, overall, it's not a bad song. But there's always one part of it that I've never liked. Is that whole wake Fuck. up, baby? Don't that whole middle section is kind of like ugh. That kind of ruins it for me, that song, that part of the song. But, you know, I think the main thing is that I thought that there was just more, like, songs that I liked better than that one. It's not that it's a bad song, per se. Like I said, yeah. I've said Revenge is probably Ezrin's only real decent record that he was involved with. Wow. Even mm -hmm. Alice Cooper? Or do you mean just Kiss? I mean Kiss. Oh, okay. I'm or just making, a kiss record. Just making okay. sure, you know. Got just clarifying it. Yeah, I'm just protecting you, Mark. Yeah. All right, moving on into ninth place on twelve points. Let me know. Um, no. Ken, start with you. Yeah, that's on my list. Um, 
let me know is again we talked about i think last week uh, that's kind of that hidden kind of song that people don't think about much um and it's too bad they don't, they don't play that in the concert that, i think that would be really fun instead of maybe something else but uh yeah let me know is a really really good song like and it was originally what sunday driver so um real cool song i've always liked it it's just a cool great song from one of the great songs from their first album so well i, I probably sh- there. i should have looked at who the other vote was um because it's also just one other person right. voting for it monty <clears throat> really i wrecked a curve on this too because i have it number three on my list really? um you didn't wreck it okay um He's i love you know and i talked and I talked about. <laughs> I said a good mood today, and I and I talked about it last week. How much I love this song, um, so it it was pretty easy for me to put it that high on my list. I mean, it's it might be on a given day, it might be my one in my top five Kiss songs. I love "Let Me Know." I think it's very underappreciated and very underdone by the band. I think that it should have been played more in the 70s i think it should have been played more um throughout their career and i think it's a great song and julian talked about it last week that you know 17 8 year old paul stanley is just writing sunday driver you know and it turns into let me know which is just ridiculous that that's coming out of that that guy's brain at that age it's Mm -hmm. and it's and it's still so good it stands the test of time in my opinion it's a very well formed song. I would love to hear um, a demo of it from him at that age to see what it sounded like. Just Paul Stanley and his guitar. It nearly made my list. I think it was an eleventh, uh, and just got bumped off. Um, I, I, but I agree with Lonnie. Mark. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't on my list, but I I think that it's one of those songs for me, where if I hear it. I, I find myself going, yeah, this is this is pretty good. I, like I I don't say it's a bad song by any stretch. I think it's a it's a pretty decent song. But it's just when we did this list, it was one of those songs that once again that I just never even gave two thoughts of putting on in my top ten because it just really isn't up that high for me personally. I mean, again, is it because I don't like the way it sounds on the record or what is whatever it is? But it's it's a it's a decent song. I think it I think that uh. You know, Lonnie and those guys are probably right that if it was, if it would have made it on, let's say, a live, and they played it and it made it on that record, maybe I would have had a much higher, like, appreciation of it because a lot of the songs that they did back then, that were put on a live, really boosted, you know, people's opinions of them mm-hmm. compared to the other studio versions of them. Yeah, nice. I, I mean, there's there's really not a lot to criticize any of these songs. I mean, yeah. they're yeah. they're Kiss songs, and we've just said that Kiss is one of the greatest bands ever. So, um, moving on into eighth place on uh, what is it, thirteen thirteen points? Is that some Julian math coming into play? Um, mm-hmm. I love it loud, Mark. Mm. Yes. Well, this did this did make my list. Uh, it was number seven on my list, and uh, you would think that I'd be sick of this song. Not only because they played a lot live, but I think I mentioned this once before when I was in my convention days and I used to go all the time when they were around here and I would go on my big hunt for bootleg VHS tapes. I found one at a Toronto convention that was a Creatures of the Night compilation video VHS. So I was like, oh, I'm going to get this. So I grabbed it and it must have shown I Love It Loud about 67 times on that video because it was like... <laughs> television reports about the album uh, you know concert reviews and all they would show is that because that was the only video that they had from that album mm. so I was by the time that video was done I was so sick of it if I ever heard that song for like the next year I would like immediately turn it off but I have to admit I really love it and especially on the Creatures album I think it's fantastic well this one also did very well because it only got two votes um, Ken yeah I, I put that number two on mine because I think it's just a it's such a great song and it's lasted so long from Creatures and on their concert tours um, and you know they still do it today um, 
and it's it's just yeah sometimes you feel oh yeah i've heard that so many times but uh it's just a really well written song catchy song and you know kind of an anthem so um great song for gene and uh that's why i put it so high i, I just i don't get really sick of it but i think it's really good Lonnie, you didn't have it in yours. Anything to say on I Love It Loud? I said it can wreck the curve on this one, having it so high. Let's pay yeah. that. <laughs> well, you, you got, course, you got to learn course, how to wreck yeah. the curve because Lonnie's, uh, of you know. Of course he had a Gene song that high, too. I mean, that, that's not surprising either. No, that's not surprising. But I did not have it on my list. And I think for a lot of the reasons Ken just said, it's just like it is overdone. And they, I, I, they didn't play it on the reunion tour, and they didn't play it on Psycho Circus, but damn, have they played it on every tour since then? <laughs> yeah. And and it's good, and and like Ken said, it is an anthem. It is a good song. Um, but it, in my opinion, it's just a, it's just a little overdone, and it, it it's to the point where I, I wouldn't miss it if they didn't play it because it's, it's, it's been done so much, and and maybe that's. Just my point of view. It, but it, but it, in the same time, it is a really good song, and I can see why Ken did rank it the way he did. Yeah, it didn't get anywhere near my list, even though I, I mean, I like <laughs> it, but you know, it's got one of those solos that I can actually play. Um, right. You know, <laughs> you know, that and heading out to the highway, and you know, <laughs> it's about my level, but. Nah, we'll just move on. Next one is another Gene pick, surprisingly. And uh, again, only two people voted for this one. And uh, I think it's one of the finest Gene Simmons anthems to be ignored for most of the band's career. Can I? Yeah, that's that's on my list up at four. Um, always been one of my favorite songs. You know, when I first heard The Elder and played that, you know, it's kind of like thrown for a loop with all the different stuff going on the first time listening to it. But then it got to the end of like, ah, that that is Kiss. That is the true Kiss song from that whole Elder album. And it just, uh, you know, it's a great. Uh-oh, they agree. Um, <laughs> Downtown San Francisco. I don't want to be arrested. Um, Get the firehouse. Uh, yeah, yeah, get the firehouse. Um, but yeah, it's such a well-written, catchy song. I I like the the message in it is is mm. is very important, um, very very important. And uh, I kind of you know believe that you know message. So, I uh, you know great song. What am, what am I gonna say? Yeah, I had it in fourth place as well. You know, I, I love it. It's up tempo. It's catchy. It's uh, positive. It's anthemic. Um, the only problem that we have is the little part of the it. Part. <laughs> they should have had a guitar solo. Yeah, that's you, know, you know, that's that's the the only minor quibble with it. But it <laughs> is it is one of those songs that I think does a good job of defining Kiss as a positive. Um, metal band, hard rock band with some of the <clears throat> anthems that it has about believing in yourself and those sorts of things. So, uh, Mark? Uh, it's no surprise it's not on my list. I mean, you know who's involved with this, you know. Yeah, so, that's of course, you know, not gonna Not going to have that sort of stuff on my list. Uh, especially <laughs> since it's so overly bubblegumish, you know. I don't do no this and that and I don't do that. It's like, come on. You know, please. You know, a, the, meanwhile, your whole audience base does, but you know, the, like, like they're gonna cl relate to that. But you know, the, the, look, it's a good song. I, I, I think overall, it's probably decently written. I, I have to agree that the whole breakdown with the finger snaps is really cheesy, and I think we could do an episode just on that alone. How Kiss ruins a good snaps? song. No, how Kiss ruins a good song. Because <laughs> there's always something in a song that Kiss does that they ruin. Like, look at I Just Wanna. Great song, but then they do that ridiculous breakdown in the middle. Then you have this song. You know, it's pretty good. It's rock and roll. What's, and they do what's the common denominator, snaps. Mark? Ezrin. Yeah, Bob Ezrin. Did yeah, he, he completely effed up the song. What, what, we, what we really need in this song, guys, is a little bit of West Side Story. Yeah, exactly. See what I mean? The, yeah, the, it's West the Side man, Story. Yeah. The man, well, the really, man was yeah. clearly out of it on, you know, 
that album, The Elder. I mean, come on. You oh, gotta, maybe a little bit of slack, but... Completely gacked. Uh, Lonnie, I. Uh, I thought I'd put it in my trash can. <laughs> You know, I I wanted to. I just I I ran out of spots. Honestly, I do like that song. I really uh-huh. do. Just, just, I don't have I don't have much negative to say about I. Honestly, um, I I, I very could have easily have swapped out one one song for it. I just so. want it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe no. yes, I maybe know. not. Maybe. I, I, could, I could. <laughs> Bye, so hey, stand All right. by that. It, no, it's a good pick. It's a good pick because it's a good song. Next up, we've got a tie. We've got two songs on 16 points. And I'm just trying to see. Uh, well, only three people had votes in for Shock Me. So, mm-hmm. uh, well, I did. Well, because it shocked me. Not. Come on. It's Ace Frehley. I mean, he'll be playing that twice during a show soon. Uh, Ken? Yeah, Shock Me was kind of a no brainer. Um, Ace's first real song, uh, you know, vocally uh, as a lead vocalist, and just a blistering, you know, guitar solo in it. It's great. the 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 drumming of Peter Chris on it, the syncopation he did on it, and that sort of stuff, um, just makes it a great, great song. Um, it's it's always, you know, I'm surprised they don't do it in lit time. Well. <laughs> let Tommy sing it. Uh, it's not sacrilege. I think they should just do it. They do it in the sound checks with Tommy uh, still today. Um, so, uh, you know, what's wrong with, with doing it? You know, just give him a freaking song and let him sing it. So, anyway, Shock Me is a great song. Number eight on my list, though. I sat down on the cruise when they did that. I sat in my seat, put my arms, and I like Tommy. So. <laughs> In protest. It's like, wow. come on, come on, guys. Ace can hear you. you. Wait, no, Ace can't hear you, but he is still on the boat. Uh, but he is Mark, here. Yeah. Mark, uh, this is uh, on 16 points because of you. Yeah, it's number three on my list. I, I, I've uh-huh. always loved this song. I, I think it's, you know, one of Ace's, you know, signature songs, you know. I mean, everybody says, you know, rock soldiers and that. Forget that. That, that. That's not a, that's, that's an okay Ace song. This is a good Ace song, okay? I mean, it rocks. You know, it has a good solo in it. I love the guitar sound. I think Eddie Kramer did a good good job on this song. Uh, th- there's there's nothing about this that I don't like. I mean, even you know, Ace's for Ace's first vocal. I think he did a great job. I mean, it could have been much worse. You know, uh, and I and I think. Well, no. I mean, listen listen to him now. I mean, come on, he's, he's that, terrible. That, singing that's, now, but... that's a hell of a thing to say. It could have been much worse. His first could have been. vocal. Well, yeah, sure it could have been. I mean, if, if you have when you have a good producer, they, you know, they can kind of guide you. You know, with a, don't sing it like this. Try singing it like this. That note there was a little. Eh, try doing it like this, and I guarantee you that's what happened. And it turned out to be a great song. And I don't think Ace had any problem with that. He's never once badmouthed Eddie Kramer about working on anything with him. No, he hasn't. Probably can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Eddie Kramer? Where was I? Ah. Who? Who? Curly. All right. Uh, next up is a, a song that got. Did uh, Lonnie give his? Oh, I didn't. Pick I'm sorry. I didn't. Well, would you like to say something have... about Shock Me? Yes. I, I didn't do. have Shock Me on my list, but I, you know, I kind of feel the same way about it that I do. I that I could easily replace one of the songs I have with it. I mean, it is great. And it's Ace Frehley singing, and the, like Ken said, the guitar solo is a blistering guitar solo. And if I had to do my list again, it it may make it on the list. It just was the mood I was in at the time. So, mm. uh, but but n- nothing bad to say about it. And, and I can see why it's on the three of your list. And I probably I wrecked the curve by not having it on mine. Nah. <laughs> That's two now. We cool. <laughs> All right, so it's tied with Let Me Go Rock and Roll, which had a, a vote from each one of us. I mean, again, um, out of the school of kind of um, rock and roll, upbeat, uh, Let Me Know. You know, there, there's a whole bunch of early Kiss songs, and this is just one of the fun ones. And I'm going to say either the single or the a live version, because both of them are fantastic. Um I really, even the production on Hotter Than Hell, I like this song. Uh, Mark? Yeah, I, I like this song too. I mean, 
I remember back in the day when one of my first bands, we used to we used to jam this one. I mean, it's so simple to play. That's one of the beauties of it. That you can just go out and just start playing that riff and a dan 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 dan, and you know right away what it is. And you know, if you want to do a short version, you do the hotter than hell version. If you want to do a nice long version if you're playing a gig or something then you can always do the live version of it and you know do that whole breakdown part and everything and it's it's really cool i mean that's the beauty of doing a song in a kids when you write a song in the key of a like that the neck on the guitar i mean unless you really really pooch it you can you can you can really do some great soloing in a i mean it's pretty hard to screw up a guitar solo in the key of a and e so uh, I Julian, I refuse to believe that. I think for sure that if we did a jam, you would probably be able to do a fantastic solo in the key of A. Yeah, one note. Um, there we go. <laughs> All right, so you had that one on three points. And... I had it on eight. Yep, and so did Lonnie. Lonnie, let me go rock and roll. No, good song. Classic Kiss song. Um, absolutely love it on a live yeah, the the band's so tight. It sounds great. I really love the version too. That's on that Psycho Circus bonus disc from mm. that that they put out. That that version is is really really good too. That um, that reunion band sounds excellent on that version. of let me go rock and roll. Um, no, it, it's just a great song. It's a simple song. It's a fun song. It's a Kiss song. You know, it's it's really what what Kiss songs are. They're simple and they're fun. You know, Mark mentioned you know that that you know it's easy to play, and that and that's great. It, and that it's it's just a fun rock and roll song, and, and and it's one of their classics. And I love it when they do it. So, you know, easy easy pick to be on my list. It's funny that you mention uh, the in, I think it's Indy ninety eight uh, that mm-hmm. was on that bonus disc. I, I retransferred Argentina ninety nine, um, just audio today. Because I, I don't watch videos a lot. I, I want to listen to the audio, so I wanted a super high res uh, run through the from the tape, the VHS deck through my EQ. Um, fucking hell, they were not as bad as we're led to believe on the Psycho Circus tour. I listened to that a few times after the transfer was done, and I'd um, kind of mastered it slightly really fun and that's probably why i only did my list today that's probably why it made my list today ken you put this really high obviously because it's gene simmons and as a card carry <laughs> member of the gene simmons society <laughs> you are out. contractually bound to rank him above all uh, others yeah. and signed the contract <laughs> um, blood yours yeah yes um yeah let me go rock and roll five on my list um it's just a, a great classic Kiss song, fun song. It's the school of, you know, Chuck Berry style rock and roll, uh, roots of rock kind of song. And, and that's what makes it, you know, real fun. Uh, yeah, it's simple, but it's simple and catchy. And I, I guess that's why they released it as a single um, off of that album. Unfortunately, it didn't go anywhere because uh, they weren't playing that kind of rock and roll on, you know, that time in the 70s am radio yeah 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 but uh it's just just a real cool great song yeah i do love the live version even more uh, but this is still fun short to the point and 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 just you know rocks so it's good all right moving on it's good one of the songs uh, that shredded paul stanley's voice Mm-hmm. Um, and I Still Love You wasn't on the list. I don't know, Julian Math, clearly. But this one is representative of him over singing in concert. I was listening to some Revenge stuff today. And hearing him sing this live in the 90s, you can actually hear the start of, mm-hmm. you know, cracking, sing with the Heavens on Fire intro. Um, but I Want You is, on 19 points, is is clearly... A really good song. I mean, it, number one, it comes off rock and roll over. Uh, but I didn't vote for it. So, Mark, uh, mm. let's start with you. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's my number two pick, I Want You. I mean, I've, I've always loved that song. Rock and Roll Over is my favorite Kiss album of all time. And what a way to start the record with that fantastic guitar piece with Paul singing. Uh, yeah, I mean... Look, when you watch the video back in the 70s when they did it, 
you know, he, he did a great job doing it. Uh, of course, as Julian points out, as time goes on and the 90s comes around, he seems to have some, you know, chip on his shoulder that he has to prove to the world that he is the mightiest vocalist of all time and he can sing every note in the spectrum and every octave possible. And, you know, it started to take its toll on his voice, right? I mean, you, you can't do that and get away with it unless you're a properly trained singer and if you give yourself proper time in between shows to do it. And they didn't. They, they're doing back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back shows, so you, you're going to hurt your voice doing that. But the song is fantastic. I've always loved it. I think it has a great ace uh, you know, solo in that as well. And uh, I always thought that the harmony vocals are really cool in that. And it's a, it's a good song to the point. It's a, it'll always be high on my list. Lonnie, it just eked into your list. It did. Um, it is on my list. I I like I just I mean, I like I want you. It's it's great from, you know, the intro and to, to the, the guitar. And it's and it's it, it is a fun and classic song and it it was so much fun when they brought it back and they dug it out in 2003 when they were touring with Aerosmith. It was the only different song in that set list that they hadn't been playing um, you know, on the reunion tour or Psycho Circus or, Re or Farewell Tour. They, mm. they dusted that off and played that with the, the Peter Chris and Tommy Thayer lineup. And you know, I you go back and the, you know, and they played it again in '04 on Rock the Nation. But you go you go back and listen to those those those, uh, those uh, recordings of that song, and they have like that breakdown in the middle, and it's just like bam, boom, boom, and it's just so loud. And I I went to that Aerosmith show with a buddy of mine, and it was so loud. He looks at me and he goes, "Jesus." <laughs> 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 So I oh, almost any time I hear um, a version of I Want You from that era of 03, 04, I always remember my buddy Sean turning to me and looking at me, just like holding his ears like, why did you bring me here? Nice. <laughs> but it's a great song and I and I love it. So it, it eked onto my list, but it's, it, is a, it is a classic Kiss song. Well, Ken, this was uh, up there on your list as well. Yeah, it's a great song that pretty much that was the one that was started it all for me because my friend introduced me to that album and played that first so that was the deal with that one and plus hey even though it's the first song um that kind of got me you know my interest um it's 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 one of the best songs uh lead off you know kind of songs on, on the 70s albums um, and it, it's, it's probably one of the best songs off of that album in general. Um, really, it's just, it's just a great song. Uh, and, uh, I just, just like the way it starts off mellow and then kicks in and it's, it just rocks the, you know, the heck out. So what was it on your list? Uh, it was number three on my list. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. I was debating where to put that, but, uh, yeah. But it's 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 up there. It's yeah, up there. So it's it very is. important. It's a very important song to me in in more than one way. You know, the, yeah. to, to, you know the importance of getting hooked on Kiss and then just it being a great song in itself. So nice. Yeah. So I I didn't. I'm just trying to think of whether there are any good soundboards or pro videos from O3 because. I think there's a partial O3, or it might be an O4. That would be something that'd be really nice. Um, and yeah. there are some decent recordings from the O3 tour, but a soundboard would be very nice. All right, uh, moving on into uh, fourth, well, third place. Now there's a clear separation starting, obviously, as we get into, I think, a little bit more predictable. This is a song I can actually play. So I'm very happy to say that on 22 points, Love Her All I Can, another really fine Paul Stanley composition. Um, and, and again, it surprises me because I do listen to a lot of, you know, harder rock, that this is a very poppy song. 
Mm-hmm. And um, again, I guess it's no surprise because it's so catchy. It is really one of the things that Kiss did very well. And I'm going to keep talking while I'm looking for this damn thing on my list to see what everyone voted for. Um, <laughs> God, I'm lost. Completely. I'm number six. Why? Well, I know where it is, but I wanted to see. There it is. Everyone voted for it. So um, it's, it was very high up on Lonnie's list. It was. Um, Love Rally Camp was four on my list. I really, really like this song. Um, it's so catchy. Um, so it's it's so poppy, but it's so catchy and so fun all at the same time. And it's a song I wish that wouldn't have gotten buried just as quickly as it did. You know, it, it in my opinion, it never really got the chance that that it really truly deserved. Um. It, it it's almost as much fun as come on and love me is and you know we haven't said we haven't mentioned come on and love me yet so we know that's going to be super high it's going to be in the top two because this is number three unless i left um, it out of the list and, and that's extremely yeah. possible <laughs> but <laughs> love all i can answer. but love all i can i put almost neck and neck with come on and love me i love it that much yeah well, it, it it's really been skewed by you and me because I, I it's my third pick, you know, so that's enough to take it pretty high up. Ken, it uh, pretty much just made your list. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's number nine on my list. Uh, it's that's not a gene not, song. Not me. <laughs> it's because it's not a gene song. I put it at number nine. But, uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, my number one is not a gene song. I just thought to say I know, that. I'm shocked. We'll, we'll talk about that shortly. <laughs> yeah, it's a little shocking. Shocking. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is kind of like, in a way, like, let me know. I mean, it's the same kind of thing. It's a, it's kind of an overlooked great song by Paul. That's kind of, uh, was, uh, where out other songs outshine the song on that, on the album that it was on, um, you know, like come on and love me and a number of other songs on just to kill. And just like on the first album with let me know that other songs out you know outshined it you know strutter and so on so uh but again it's real catchy another catchy well-written song by paul and uh you know i'm never gonna skip it when i listen to just a kill yeah mark middle of the road for you yeah it was number six i i, I always liked the, the guitar riff i thought it was pretty uh cool riff i mean especially if you played in the more modern guitar sound it sounds really good and I think the thing that caught me with this song when I first heard it was the vocal harmonies. I'm always a sucker for good mm-hmm. vocal harmonies. And this has some really, really good vocal harmonies in it. And I think that's the the main thing that people latch on to with this song. You know, it's not very long. It's kind of in and out before you know it. And I, I just think that if it maybe if it was just a touch bit longer, and if it had a little bit more push behind it, I think it could have. That's could've what been she more... said. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. Yeah. Then uh, it, it could have did much better. Way to go, Julian. Oh. Oh, oh God. Oh, it's your fault, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 Lonnie, did you talk about it? Yes. Okay, see, I knocked myself off track. <laughs> off track. Thrown off track. Now. Yep, and, and here we are. Wait, you know, again, clear separation now into the top two in second place. Come on and love me. And uh, Lonnie, you were the only one to have this as your number one pick. It is my number one pick. It is wow. It is my favorite Kiss song. So, and it, and oh, it is. It is. I, I've said it on the you show before. That. It my, I guess I ignored my, that. Yeah, because it's a Paul song, you probably just block that out. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. As much as I love Revenge, as much as I am a banner waving member of the Revenge fan club, Come On and Love Me is my favorite Kiss song. I absolutely love it. Um, when I was filling out this list, it was so easy to put that at the top because it is my favorite Kiss song. It, In my opinion, it just represents everything that Kiss is about. It's so fun. It's 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 short, but it's fun, but it's poppy, and it's just it's just Kiss wrapped up into about about barely three minutes. I mean, really, and it's so so good. The the lyrics are good, 
The music is good. Everything about it, it's just fantastic. And it was so easy for me to, to put it number one. Yeah, I had it number two, and it could easily be number one on any given day. These could all be reversed, uh, pretty much any one of these songs. And I don't think I'd ever want to call it power pop, because power pop makes you think of tomorrow and love her all I can. You know, but it is a really just, it just moves along in a really nice clip. I always love Paul's vocal on it. I always love the lyrics on it. Um, and I, I can't even complain about uh, Dress to Kill's production on this one. Mark, uh, kind of more middle of the road for you again. Uh, number four. Yeah. Uh, the interesting thing about this song is that I feel this is a song that can go both ways of, in those two different genres. It can go like a rock song, like how it's presented in Dress to Kill. I think it's a great song. Again, to the point, uh, has a really memorable vocal and a memorable chorus and has a memorable guitar solo part in there, like the right at the top even. And I, I think that it works really well. But then if you want to take it down a more poppy route, just listen to the uh, double platinum version where they back off the guitar and uh, push up the acoustic guitar a lot more in that mix and it all of a sudden it becomes a slightly more poppier sounding song but it still works just the same and i think it's just as good a song yeah and think of um what was it years ago there was a tribute and a partridge family tribute band did a cover i think mm. of shout it out loud or something mm. you know and, and taking it in that kind of sonic direction it could easily go that way as yeah. well it, it's fun it's a really fun song to play on the guitar uh ken middle uh, you actually had it right in the middle of your pack right, right in the middle and uh <clears throat> it's another great song off of um just to kill it's probably the either could be the best song off of just to kill or you know there's rock and roll all night on there of course and and so on but uh uh it's 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 up there as one of the t you know top songs um i guess they did release it as a single right so um it, there's a reason for that because it's so catchy and, and well written and uh, yeah it's too bad they didn't do this song more too in concert you know why not just do it <clears throat> it's a really 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 good song so but you know they, they strayed away from it they just stick to rock and roll all night uh, or she from, from the album um, when they could have done you know maybe uh, come on and love me instead of she uh, though I like Sheila, so, but uh, yeah, it's it's a good song. It should be up up high on the list. No, they did rock bottom during the reunion tour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah, rock bottom. All right, so I guess it's no surprise. Top and three of us had it as our top picks. <clears throat> um, I stole your love from the day I put on Love Gun um, and heard that song for the very first time. <laughs> you know, mine have a lot of Paul Stanley songs in it. Uh, my list, obviously, I like his writing, I like his singing, I like the band's performance. Uh, again, really good tempo, speed, guitar solo, uh, or just <clears throat> guitars in general. Everything works here. Mark, it was your top pick. Why? Oh, it's just a, such a catchy song. I've always loved that riff, right, right at the very top. And again, I think I mentioned this once before. I think it was when me and Daniel did that favorite guitar riffs episode that's coming out. Uh, that it's one of the rare guitar riffs that starts in C sharp. I mean, besides, ironically, "Come On and Love Me," which also I think starts in C sharp. Uh, this is also a C sharp song, and it's, you know, usually Kiss like their A's and their E's and that kind of stuff. But the C sharp is an interesting key to do it in, and it definitely makes it stick out a little bit more. Uh, I think that the guitar playing is great in there. The bass playing, I think, is really good in there as well. Some interesting up high note stuff from Gene. And uh, yeah, vocally, it's one of Paul Stanley's better sung vocal for sure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Lonnie, your top pick. Oh, wait, no, it wasn't yours. Mm. No, it was middle of the pack for you. Mm. It was middle of the pack. Um, I like I Saw Your Love, don't get me wrong. It's, it's really, really, really good. But you know, I I am I'm sorry. I did rank. I just wanna and let me know and love her all I can ahead of it, as well as come on and love me. But um, I had a feeling this would this song would end up being number one because I we've we've sung its praises multiple 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 times over the years. Um, 
and it is absolutely fantastic. And it's another song, too, that the band really hasn't played nearly as often as they should have since the reunion tour. Mm-hmm. It, sh- it should have been a staple in 1996 and should have stayed a staple after that because it is so good. And, you know, we talk about it all the time. The, the board talks about it all the time. Other podcasts talk <laughs> about this song all the time, how great it is. But it's a song that's, for the most part, been ignored by the band since the reunion tour, and I think that's a that's a or it's a real shame. So, but I, it's no surprise that it's number one. I really like it, and I know you guys do too. Yep, must be a good song because, ladies and gentlemen, the voice of reason has as his number one pick a wow. Stanley composition. Ken, <laughs> yeah, well, hand in that uh, card right. right now. Yes. Shred it. <laughs> it's. It is the greatest song, leadoff song, in my opinion, uh, on the Kiss album. And, uh, yeah, it's too bad that, like Alani said, that they're not really, you know, they don't play it. They didn't play it enough. Um, they could easily swap, you know, Making Love out and put this one in. I, I would rather have I Stole Your Love. Fine, than making love. Yeah, uh, it's just, a, to me, it's a much better song. Um so I, I'm kind of surprised. Just a little uh, tidbit though about this uh, this whole thing that we're we're doing is, you know, on the list of songs that Julian presented to us, uh, mm. there's like I think there's like 21 Paul Stanley songs. Oh God, and, I was gonna I thought you'd say yeah, there's and nine that I missed. No, 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 <laughs> nine, nine, nine Gene songs, mm. and uh, that's. It's just the way it is, because you know that's whatever song. But the song titles, Paul has a lot of songs that have I or me in it. Uh, just, just what are you trying to say? say? Considering he later, considering he later did a song, just, it's I, not me. I just <laughs> noticed that. But uh, here's the, I mean, you could have, you know, rock and roll all night could have been I want to rock and roll all night if they, you know, wanted well, to. Well, it was originally way. on the acid. Yeah, exactly. So it could have. This could have been on the list. It could have been had they not renamed that, or you know, maybe calling Doctor Love could have said, you know, they call me Doctor Love. You know, well, know. they do. It's part of the lyrics. It's part of the lyrics, but it's not the song title. So, but anyway, uh, I think you know, I Stay Your Love fits. That's a number. That's the number one song, and that's uh, that works for me. Yeah. So, did I miss anyone? I lost track no, again. No. So it's not surprising that a lot of these songs are Paul Stanley songs, and I think that was a good point for Ken to point out um, about how many of the songs are. I mean, come on, Gene really took it down to the basics of I. There, beat that, Paul. <laughs> yeah, it's I. Yeah. You're not going to get any more concise than that. And uh, Again, I Stole Your Love, I, I'm not surprised. And Come On and Love Me, I'm not surprised. Um I, I don't think any of it's too surprising because it's when you ask someone what's their favorite death metal band, there's always one guy who's going to pick that band from Outer Mongolia that no one's ever heard. Um, but when it comes to picking favorite Kiss songs, I think we were all pretty honest in our selections. No one did pick I Confess or any weird stuff to kind of throw it. Um, I'm disappointed well, that Talk To Me didn't make it. I had it at number you five. Talk to me. Pardon me? You don't like Talk To Me. I actually picked it today. You so did? did? I did. <laughs> You're always like that. But, but how is that possible? Like it's Kiss. If you, if you picked it and I so picked it, then how come that. it didn't make the list? Because of math. Because I had it as <laughs> number five. Yeah, it only it only got nine points, so it didn't make it in. It was in 11th place. Oh, okay. Three of us voted for it, but it just didn't. I did didn't, not vote for it. It did not. Well, yeah, oh, cle- clearly I, not. I voted on religion tonight. That didn't get. It doesn't. Come on, it's not going to get up there. I I actually had it in there. fifth place, and it didn't make it. I got I'm one. Shocked by that. Yeah, I got one more board talk. Uh, top. Let me just uh, review the uh, the top ten uh, from ten <laughs> from um, from tenth to first. I just want to 
let me know. I love it loud. I let me go rock and roll. Shock me. I want you. Love her all I can. Come on and love me. And I stole your love. Those were our picks about it's all about I and me in the song titles. Just a different way to talk about all those songs. Uh, and, you know, we're going to do some other episodes that aren't all rankings or death matches, I promise. But uh, one more board topic has kind of jumped out today um, that I want to go around the tape a lot. Ken, starting with you. But Bruce, Vinny, Eric, or Tommy, do you foresee any of those gentlemen writing a book? Yes. <laughs> and and if so, uh, which one would I you think... want the most? I would... I'd want Bruce because he's so freaking honest, um, uh, and you know, and maybe and, and Tommy. I mean, I'd like to hear his 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 stories from you know. It's kind of like Bruce is the you know, and Tommy came later on, um, and uh, there was a little bit of crossover there if you count the hot in the shade or that kind of era and Tommy helping out. And, and so on but uh, I would start with Bruce um, and and Tommy would be my second to to have a, a book I think both of them would be very interesting though which inside. one do you think is most likely I th I think Bruce is most likely actually hmm Lonnie what about you for me I'd love an Eric Singer book I think that would be a lot of fun and very entertaining going through him as a journeyman mm. throughout the eighties until, you know, with Alice Cooper, Lita Ford, black Sabbath until he finally lands with kiss in the early nineties, gets this gig and thinks that he's going to be, mm -hmm. thinks that he's finally found his home, that this is where I'm supposed to be. And then is out and is scorned by the band and is like, really, you're you're doing this? You you said you'd never do this, and I can't believe you're you're doing this reunion. And then goes back to Alice Cooper, and eventually, hey Eric, we kind of need you <laughs> to finish this farewell tour, and he comes back and he does it and. The band sounds great. And I think he probably thought, hey, we got some momentum here. The band sounds great. Let's go tour Europe on this farewell tour and let's just see what happens. Maybe we can keep a good thing going. And then they don't. And then, oh, Text. hey. We'll call you. We'll call you. Oh, yeah. hey, we don't need you. And then the whole, we need three members of the band for this tour with Aerosmith as we signed this mm. contract with Live Nation. Ace isn't returning our calls. Hey, sorry, Eric. Um, you're out. And then a year later, you're back. I would love to hear Eric tell his story about mm -hmm. the in and out of Kiss from 92 to 04. And, and, mm -hmm. and obviously there's more to it than that. But Eric's story from 92 to 04, I think would be really entertaining. Okay. Which yeah. one do you think is most likely? I don't think that's very likely for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Honestly, honestly, some, event, some events have to happen before something like that. Yeah. Would be Probably. Honest, yeah. Honestly, I was going to say that I, I agree with Lonnie 100% that I think Eric's would be very entertaining from that point of view. But I'm telling you right now, Paul and Gene both have to leave this planet, like, you know, hmm. off with angels' wings before that happens because they'll cease and desist everything. And deny everything because you know it's a lot of bullshit. I guarantee there's a lot of, you know, hemming and hawing that happened with that stuff. I mean, could you and imagine broken promises? Yeah, exactly. And, oh, I mean, if I, I was imagine. Eric Singer, man, after being let go twice, I'd be like, I ain't coming back here until I get the following, and I want that in writing. And if that ain't happening, then you can go fuck yourself, because I mean, getting getting thrown out twice like that is just total kiss bullshit. You know that they're they're known for doing, and you know what I think that Bruce as well is another one that would be an interesting read as well, but again, won't happen until they're dead because they'll again want to stop any sort of little thing that they don't want anybody to know about. The only one that I think that will come out now that could come out now is Tommy because he's a, he, as much as I like Tommy, 
He's a Mr. Brown noser. He's got his nose so stuck up their rear ends, Paul and Jeans, that he would probably only write good stuff about them and how fantastic it's been working with them. And, and they're going to all approve that. We'll give them a big check mark to, for this one. You know, and the, the, that one will come out for sure because he's not going to badmouth them. You know, he's worked with them for how long? If there is any dirt, he won't say anything about them. I got the feeling that he's very much, you know, in their pocket. So, but if anything, that's the only one I could see coming out. Yeah, I would like Eric the most because his story from working with his father in jazz band, some of the stuff that he's touched on in interviews with me and other other people and missing so many shows because he was working in a band, you know, at that age where a lot of his friends were going out to concerts and then playing in some of those bands that he was either missing or getting to see. Um, but, you know, he was in line for Cinderella. He was in line for David Lee Roth, uh, I believe. Uh, he was in line for um, oh, Vinnie Vincent Invasion. You know, um, he played with Gary Moore, um, Black Sabbath, Tony Iommi, Lita Ford, yeah. Jesus. You know, that whole 80s run. I mean, Sabbath, Alice Cooper, and Kiss, Gary Moore, Brian May. Mm. Holy shit. You know, um, but I think his, he, he's such a smart guy as well. He ha has some very astute observations, but also uh, just depending on how he framed his story, it, because it has to be his, not what we want him. Um, but I think he, he would be brutally honest um, and accurate. Bruce seems to be so self-censored at this point that I don't know if he could tell a story, but he's sharing more on Facebook. Just this week he showed a, a picture of him and Michael Bolton pre-Meatloaf. Not a lot of people know that those two guys worked together before um, Meatloaf. Everyone, including me, I did go back and check, uh, thought that, that all the blackjack happened after he uh, came off the road with Meatloaf. Um, so just seeing stuff like that, I, I interest in that uh, but i think all these guys are pretty niche market so uh they're only going to be catering to primarily to kiss fans maybe eric some alice cooper and maybe a couple a handful of uh black sabbath fans who actually even acknowledge that era um so i do a mo mo well yeah i do as well i mean come on um there's a lot of good music from the lineups that came after Born Again. So mm -hmm. you just have to, uh, you know, dig in, get on with it. So I, I would like Eric's the most. Uh, who do I think's most likely? I think probably Eric. Because he, he, you know, he when he basically got fired when the band let go, he was pretty vocal. So mm -hmm. he, he's, uh, you know, opinionated. I, I just hope that if he doesn't, that he's been paid really well. I hope all of them get paid very well if they're not going to do any books. So, all right, that's it for this week. That was uh, It's All About Me, some rankings. Uh, who knows when our next show is, but uh, we hope when we do reconvene that you'll uh, take the time to join us, and we do appreciate you taking the time to listen. But for now, from Mark, Lonnie, Ken, and myself, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final, there are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.